Hi, I'm Dawn French, Senior Vice President of Marketing, Communications, and Community Relations at White Plains Hospital. And I'm also the chair of the 2021 Go Red for Women campaign in Westchester County. I'm excited to share a new initiative from the American Heart Association and White Plains Hospital to help educate the next generation of women about heart disease. It's called Conversations with My Daughter, a video series designed to educate and empower women to be able to positively impact their heart health. For me, the message is all about prevention. While the number of women who die each year from cardiovascular disease is startling, it's important to know that 80% of cardiovascular events can be prevented. And that's where the message to my daughters comes in. This series is designed to provide insightful information and tips on how to talk to your daughters about making smart choices around heart health. There are five topics in this video series, nutrition, stress and mindfulness, physical activity, overall heart health, and the dangers of smoking and vaping. I hope you'll find time to watch these videos and use them as a tool to start a conversation with your daughter. Obviously, the earlier that you can teach um, children and teenagers uh, stress reduction techniques, the better off that they will be because they have these skills for life um, and their brains are more open to learning new things. Um, when you have an adult and you're trying to introduce all these breathing techniques, you know, that's one thing. But now that these kids are learning it earlier, it's just becoming so much more natural for them. And it's really just becoming, you know, a part of their life and who they are. And it's wonderful that schools are starting to incorporate this into their curriculum because they really never have before. And it's, it's a wonderful thing, especially obviously with all the added stress of the pandemic and social media and all the other pressures that kids are exposed to nowadays. Well, that's really the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, if parents can control their child's social media, it's, it's very difficult. Um, but if you hear your child starting to talk about um, likes and comparing themselves with other children and really just um, focusing primarily on their phone to the detriment of every other you know, um, personal interaction with their family and in their lives, uh, it's really important to address that. And how to address that? It's very difficult. Um, you can put limitations on their phone use, or you can set boundaries for them. But as they get older, it gets harder and harder to manage that. But it definitely is a problem. Anybody with a teenager can probably tell you it's very difficult to have you know, these conversations with their kids. And the parents tend to worry a lot about their teenagers and can over ask. Um, and it's annoying to them. So we have to be careful, first of all, not to pathologize by pointing it out over and over. You know, I know I'm asking my son constantly, are you okay? Is anything wrong? You know, this constant um, question asking can be very annoying to them. So we have to be delicate about this. So one of the ways that we can do that is really asking for permission. May I ask how you're coping with this? I'm wondering how you're feeling right now. I don't want to keep bothering you, but I know how difficult this must be for you. And maybe you could even set up like a code word or a number. One thing I did with my son who doesn't like to really share with me that often um, is let me just give me a number from one to 10, how you're doing. He's not the most communicative guy. So just give me a number one to 10. Um, so I just can gauge how he's experiencing everything and maybe even share with them that, you know, you're stressed and that this is normal um, and maybe give them some control and say, when you notice that I'm stressed out, I'd like you to ask me about it. So you're really normalizing it and 
opening up that conversation and making yourself a little vulnerable in the process, giving them some control over that too. And it's also a good barometer of your own behavior and how you're acting and how you're responding because with teenagers, you know, the parents can get activated a lot of the time as well. Well, again, I can appreciate how difficult it is as a mom trying to teach your teenager anything. But my biggest advice would be to practice um, stress reduction techniques yourself so that you can model this for your child and talk about what you are doing to manage your stress. And maybe that will sort of leak through to them. Um, you can listen to a meditation app with them and sort of join this and say, you know what, I'm stressed out too. Maybe we can do this together. Let's learn some of these techniques together, you know, um, and really watching your behavior so that you don't add stress to them, right? So adjusting your expectations for them, especially during the pandemic. You know, um, I just heard a story of, of um, someone who told their child they can't play soccer unless you have all A's, you know, and, and that's not necessarily the best thing for your child, especially um, during these periods of high stress and with the pandemic. So watching your behavior and seeing if you're adding to that stress um, and also validating their emotions. Um, you know what, it must really be difficult in school with your mask on all day or something to that effect, you know, just really understanding what they are going through, letting them know that you get how stressful it is. Um, you know, they haven't been in school for a while. They might have a lot of social anxiety when they go back to school. You know, if you think about every first day of school that you've experienced, you know, every year for me as a child, I'd always have that pit in my stomach before the first day of school. Well, imagine going to school and then not going to school and then going back to school and wearing a mask and all these different things that they're experiencing right now. So instead of getting frustrated with them, you know, really validating how difficult this all must be for them. Yes, stress. Listen, we all experiencing experience stress in some ways, and that can be normal and healthy because it can motivate us sometimes, right? But it's when the stress starts interfering with our functioning or with our daily activities, it can be detrimental to us. So there is a balance. Some stress can be good, but when it's chronic stress, it can really cause disease and lots and lots of um, emotional and physical problems for us. Um, we, you know, we all experience that acute stress when we're like, God forbid, about to get into an accident or, you know, feel like someone's following us, like our heart starts racing and we get all that acute stressors. Um, but when the and that's good because that's how we survive. That's a, a an um, inherent um, evolutionary uh, thing that we're, we're kind of born with, but it's the chronic stress that we have to really be aware of because that can cause disease.